guys and welcome back. This is Chosen Architect and today we're jumping into what is called Project Architect. So let's get into this. First of all, guys, I just wanted to mention, if you haven't already joined my Discord, I do have an amazing Discord over at discord.gg forward slash chosen architect. And while you're there, be sure to check out our vanilla SMP server. We do have a server that is available for anyone to join, and I would love for you guys to join it. And also, while you're there, be sure to check out the Discord premium memberships if you do want to support the content that I make. Of course, I would appreciate it. And guys, be sure to click that subscribe button because we're so close to 500,000 subscribers. I can almost, I can almost... I can almost reach it. So anyways, let's get on with today's video. So you are probably asking yourself, Chosen, what is this mod pack? Just get on with it. This is Project Architect. So I did mention that I wanted to make a little bit of a mod pack so that way we could jump and get started and play something that's a little bit different and I can just sort of be myself and not really follow any sort of dedicated progression line. I just want to play, right? So that's what I made this pack out to do. So I'll have the uh, the pack, the mod list linked down in the description below. But of course, you start off with a transmutation tablet. This is going to be the whole fun around this mod pack. And it's the whole reason why it is called Project Architect because of Project E. So right away, we get access to this. So some of the first things that we need to do, of course, is still basic progression. I still have to break trees and punch away I will. So you also may be wondering who put together this mod pack. Well, over the last few days, I have been working to put together this mod pack, got everything nice and set up. And I think this thing is honestly ready to go. But at the moment, it's currently not downloadable, but it will be. Be sure to check the descriptions of the videos because it will go up for download as soon as I'm able to get it onto Curse Forge. And once it's on Curse Forge, of course, then it has to be verified, it has to go through a verification program or prog process. Um, and that takes a little bit of time and on the weekends, it doesn't go through at all. So it's going to take a little bit. It may take a week for me to be able to get this mod pack up and over there for you guys to download. But once it is, I'll be sure to let you guys know. And of course you'll be able to find it in the descriptions here or over on the discord. I'll definitely let everybody know when it goes live over there. So anyways, now that I have my logs, right? We have this beautiful thing called EMC. I'm going to go ahead and place this down. I'm going to learn my logs with that. This is worth 32 EMC. So if you're unfamiliar with how this transmutation works, let's just say, for example, I have dirt for one EMC. I throw that in there. I have a log that's worth 32 EMC. Well, now, because I put that log in there, I can pull out 32 dirt for one log. So just to put that in perspective, that's how the EMC works. And uh, there are set EMC values for just about everything. Now, there is a lot also in here that don't, that, that will not have EMC values. So that is some things that we can keep in mind. So of course you can just dump all your books in here um, and we're ready to go, right? So I'm gonna grab some wood. I'm gonna make a quick crafting table. And it, as long as this is inside my grid, I have a crafting table in here. We can go ahead and put this in the middle to learn it without dumping it in here for EMC. Same for this. And then when you put an item in the center here, it also brings that item directly to the forefront, which is really, really handy when we're about to make some tools like a standard, just a standard pick, right? Fun, fun, right? So the reason I need to get into this as quick as possible, it's getting dark. I've already made a pick. I've done too much talking. I think I'm gonna live in this area that I see here. This area is beautiful. I'm gonna show you it here in a second, but I'm gonna grab some of the stone and bam, we're gonna learn that. And now I can make a pickaxe and we can, yeah, just literally keep pulling these tools out. Um, now Tinker's Construct is in here as far as tools go. So we are going to be playing around with some tools here soon. And uh, that's going to really be fun once we get uh, all that up and going. Now that I have a stone pickaxe, I'm able to pick up my transmutation table and we're ready to up and move and hopefully find a sheep to kill while it's dark. I knew walking around at night was probably not the best thing to do, but as you can see, I just pulled in that mob and I'm able to pull that mob in. And that's right. We might have the ability to get away. Let's turn ourselves into a zombie and the zombies no longer bother us. That's right, the morph is in here. However, we gotta be careful. We gotta be careful because as we are a zombie, 
We will burn during the daytime, but luckily I think all the other zombies sort of ignore us. Hopefully we can find some sheep. Ah, oh, perfect. There we go. Oh, also we just unlocked a trinket. Look at that. Oh man, it's so crazy looking when we're able to just pull in a mob like that. Um, okay, so now that we have this, we need to get back to our area and hopefully make ourselves a bed real quick. So at this point, I can now switch back to myself. Oh, the sounds. And we're ready to go. It is dark, but we should be able to throw some wool in here. And all I need is three, right? Oh, this is going to work. And we can make ourselves a bed real quick. Perfect. We can even store the bed, so if we ever need it later on... Oh, we can make it! And we can sleep through our first night. So I was thinking, this area seems like a really great area to sort of get started in. Go ahead and grab some torches. And, uh, let's check this out. I mean, this, this area right here... I mean, just needs a little bit of light. Oh man, this is going to be perfect for a place to call home. Right here with the water. We have the cave, the area covering above. Oh yeah, this is this is going to be great. I'm, I'm calling this home. Oh no, we have a little bit of a problem though. I think we have an infestation. <laughs> There's a cockroach literally right. Oh no. Maybe, maybe I shouldn't call this place home. We better get out of here. <laughs> oh no. So now that I have a few basic materials, I should probably get started with tinkers so I can go mining. Uh, that's really going to be a big thing. But first, I want to get like a little bit of a an area built here. I'm trying to, I'm thinking about like, I don't know, like some sort of this small little walk path that just wraps around this area. And I'm thinking about having, yeah, a little bit of a, a cave. I think this right here is going to be the gr a great spot to uh, to start mining in. Even though we have Project E, right? I still have to progress, like, normally. Like, even though we do have access to items, it's it's not like, uh, I don't know if anybody played, like, Terraria Journey Mode. Um, whereas that, you, once you put an item in, you can pull it out infinitely. This is not the case. You still need a investment. You still have to have something. So, even though I have stake in here, right, it costs 64. So, as you can see, I only have one EMC after pulling out two stacks, or a stack and a half of these. So I need some way to rejuvenate this. So I need to mine. I need to do other things. I need to find ways of generating EMC. And uh, that's basically what I'm going to be working on. Um, luckily, it is exchangeable. So like if I pull that out, I can, you know, do this. I can grab some coal. I can make some torches. I can do things like that. But still, like I still have to work at it. Um, which is, you know, something I really like about Project D. I don't know, there's some, I haven't had to play with it in a long time, play with this mod, and uh, it's been really like, I don't know, it, I, I, I'm excited. <laughs> That's all I can say, I'm just really excited to be able to play with this mod again. Now the goal of this pack for me is to, to really just have some fun, like that's the whole reason, there's no quests, there's nothing like that, um, it just sort of go as you, you know, as you go. There's tons of building mods in here, and that was something that I wanted to make sure there was tons of things that you can build. There's our fine stories. There's a little bit of tech. There's a little bit of, of magic. I mean, honestly, you're starting off with magic. Um, but yeah, there's just tons of everything in here. And uh, that's just something that I really wanted to make clear uh, getting started in this. I know a lot of people really love quest packs, but you don't always need a quest pack. Just think of this as like vanilla Minecraft and you're learning a new game for the first time. Vanilla doesn't really have quests. But I mean, if you really need them deep down, you can always find quests basically divided up for every single mod you get into. And of course, there'll be more and more the further you go through this list. So that was just something that I wanted to, to throw out there. Um, now, getting started, we need to do some Tinker's Construct. Uh, now, Tinker's has really changed. Uh, T Construct. Then in this version, um, we're basically looking at a few different tables. We really only need a couple of them right now. So this will make us Tinker's Station. And then we also need a part builder. And that one's pretty easy as well. Um, and there's even some chests and stuff I think we can make. All right. So getting started, let's go ahead and throw these in here. And uh, I need some cobble. So we'll grab a little bit of cobble. By the way, we can search up here too for cobble or stone. 
So that's another fancy trick. Um, let's go ahead and make our parts. I'm just going to make a pickaxe head that is going to be made out of cobblestone and then a tool rod that is going to be made out of wood and then a binding that's also made out of wood. And this is a great starting pickaxe. Um, however, this isn't a tool that you can just repetitively pull out of our, our system. So um, having this is nice, but it also comes at a cost of repair kits. We're going to have to use stone repair kits, which is great. But it's a great starting tool. It's way better than uh, just your default tools that we have here. Um, another one that I want to make is going to be this tool. So this is all a shovel uh, and an axe at the same time. Um, so it may look weird that it doesn't have a, a shovel head, but they actually removed shovels, believe it or not, from here. So shovels and a pickaxe head. And then I think it just gets a tool rod. Yeah, which will be wood. And so we'll just throw... Actually, I think the sticks actually work for the tool rod. Yeah. So there we go. <laughs> so we have our axe and I wish we can name them. They don't, it, you can't name them anymore like you used to be able to. Um, but here you go. Also, uh, this is another mod that I added. It's called Open Planner. Uh, it's called uh, the Tinker's Planner. And it allows you to basically go through and you can sort of randomize tools and it shows you all of the cool stats and stuff that you could potentially have on your tool or you can go through and you can individually see all the uh, stuff that you could put on here so for example if I build this out of stone stone and wood it's going to show me all of the possible modifiers that I could put on here and I could build up my modifiers if I want so if I put this on here it'll show me that hey I can only do this and this uh, but it also give me basically what this is going to look like and I can bookmark the item to save it for later it's pretty cool. I thought that was a pretty cool add-on and it does hang right there. You can see there's a little book that is sitting there. I think this goes in a different spot too whenever you have your actual anvil, but there we go. So we now have two really, really good tools. And the only other thing that I need to make is going to be repair kits and repair kits are made just like this. But as you can see, it's really loud. So if I was to shift click that out, it's incredibly loud. So if I want to get into more tinkers, I am definitely going to need these three materials that we mined a little bit ago. I'll go ahead and store these and uh, we should be able to pull out the product once it's done. Um, so if I put this in here, you can see we have a smeltery that's related to the EMC value. And uh, while we're mining, I'm going to go ahead and have this just cooking some stuff up. I have it just cooking some of that grout and uh, we should see the product here as soon as this is done. Um, this should be an EMCable item that should allow us, yes, to build, literally build our smeltery out of. Oh, this is, this is gonna be nice and quick. All right, let's go mine and hopefully find some iron. Haven't found any iron yet, but definitely found some rock root. This is from the Druidcraft mod and uh, there's gonna be a little bit of Druid building going on for sure. That is something that I plan on. Look at that, we just found iron. Yes. Ah, uh, so we still have to smelt it. Like there certain things like ores and stuff, by the way, they do not have EMC values, which is of course intended. Um, so we are gonna take this and smelt these down. And later on, uh, when we get our ores, we wanna be able to duplicate them. So that way we can get multiple ores and multiple EMC for the amount of ores that we find. Like I said, we still have to have a way of getting the EMC and the ability to exchange. I think once we find some villagers though, that is going to give us a nice little boost. Villagers are really, really powerful as far as uh, gaining EMC goes. So I was doing some mining and I just unlocked another trinket. Now, trinkets you're gonna unlock by doing certain things, beating certain bosses. There's a whole lot of things that you can do. But if I open up the trinkets menu, you notice it costs some levels to unlock slots, but our first slot is free. And right now we have two that are available to us that we've already unlocked. Um, and I think there are some that you can also craft, but this right here, you can ride a saddled pig without the need of carrots on a stick. And it all, uh, this is also the movement speed is faster than the actual speed, which is pretty nice. This one collects items and XP or orbs in a range of a 10 by 10 when activated, activated by right clicking the air. I think I'm gonna go with that one. Um, so that one is really handy. So like if I drop my pick over here, I can click with my right hand. If I didn't have torches, I could, uh, yeah, for example, throw this down here and then I can right click with my hand and look at that. 
all the items just teleport to me, which that is a really nice magnet. Especially since uh, sometimes you just don't want items always flowing to you. This stuff is where it's at right here. The dimensional shard. That has got some chunky, chunky EMC values. I will take that. There's some lapis. Perfect. Unlimited blue dye. And I'm just going to grab everything else. And we got a zombie coming. Oh, can I not mine? That requires diamond level. Oh, boy. Get out of here. I've really got to make a better weapon. Whew. Oh, our knowledge of death has increased. So this is a, our graves mod. If I click here, we can actually put points. This is a menu we can open up and we can put points into certain skills. Um, and I don't know which one I want. I really like Jailer, which is nice because uh, when we die, we have a, ch a high chance of getting a bonus um, of receiving a key that is enchanted that allows you to teleport right to your grave. But some of these other ones are really nice too. So we have the voodoo, improves effects, receives on death, which you can give yourself bonuses for dying. Uh, there's also some nice one like this one right here. It gives you a 10% potion duration. Um, also, two enchantments can be extracted. You can in extract enchantments. Oh, 30% chance to find special drops on the undead. 20% experience regained on death. Oh, that's actually nice too. In case you die and you lose all your levels, this one would help regain those levels. Uh, can convert zombie villagers to villagers by using the ancan. Oh, okay. That's the compendium. I really like the potion duration one, though. I'm going to put my point in potion duration for right now. There's something lurking up here. And it's a, a tortoise. Are you friendly? I'm not actually going to bother you. <laughs> It's a tortoise from Cork. What has it got on its back? Huh. Bet if you kill it, it drops whatever was on its back. Let's see if I can get rid of this guy. I was hoping to find some diamond the lower I got. I still have yet to find any of that. Ooh. That was a drop. I accidentally brought along an unwanted visitor. Oh no. And she's done poisoned me. Which leaves me in a really tight, tough position. There we go. Whew. And, of course it didn't drop anything. I really could have used some redstone. So the one thing I didn't see underground while mining was actually copper. So all I'm going to do is grab a few copper here. And man, I love the way the create ore sort of does its thing. How like when you expose it, you get to see the actual raw variant. Oh, that looks so good. Um, but anyways, I need this because to get into Tinker's Construct, we actually need a little bit of copper. So at this point, I need to go down and find some lava. Luckily, lava, I believe, is emc -able. Same with water. So like, if I find some water here, I can put this in my learn section. And yes, I can pull out water at a little bit of an extra cost. And same goes for lava. So I just need to find some lava while I'm down here. And I should be able to, since I should be nearing the uh, lava table. And just like that, lava. Perfect. Grab some of this. I still don't see any redstone though. Man, what a bummer. So all I have to do is quickly to get the main smeltery set up, I just have to quickly set this regular sealed, uh, seared smelter up. And uh, we have to get a casting table, or actually no, a casting basin. So we do a regular casting basin, and uh, I just need to fill this up with just enough copper, I believe, to uh, to get these things processed. I think it's exactly three. I could be wrong. I'm gonna go ahead and throw this in, and then I have to give it some lava. So I do need the side open, actually. There we go, there's the lava. And I need to prepare for the cast for the actual Tinker's controller, which is going to be a seared melter. That's pretty straightforward. And there we go. So seared melter goes in here. And then I need just enough. How much did it require? Four ingots exactly. Now there's the three ingots. So I literally just need one more copper ingot. If you put ore in here, uh, the ore works a little bit different. It actually gives you less. It doesn't exactly double your stuff, but there we go. 
and perfect. So this will be a good way, I believe, early on to get ore doubling going. And uh, not only that, but it'll allow us to get into making uh, better and fancier Tinker's tools. So I was looking at what I should do as far as uh, this goes. Like right here is brass, for example. We can alloy and do zinc, but I can't mine up zinc because I don't have a regular iron pickaxe set if I'm going the Tinker's route. Um, but what I can do is I can take glass, so just a little bit of glass and copper. And I believe if I mix these two together in a three to one, I will get three back. Uh, so I'll end up getting three of the bronze, I do believe. I think this is the bronze. We're about to find out. So the glass is melting. And yes, so we get the Tinker's bronze. So what I need is three blocks worth of this. So I'm gonna have to do this a few times in order to get that. It should be what, three, six, nine. So I'm gonna have to do it uh, nine times. This recipe, yeah, nine, nine times. And just like that, I have myself now some bronze. Now, notice this is not something that can be EMC'd. So just like I said, not everything has the ability to be done that way. Uh, but bam, this anvil, however, can be, uh, which may seem a little weird, but it definitely can be done. I'm going to go ahead and place this bad boy right here, and this is going to replace our old station and now provides us with a new one. Now, at the moment, I don't have any gold because I can't mine, unless I made, of course, a pick to go down there and mine it. If I'm going the Tinker's route, I'm going to stick with it and go this way. So I'm going to grab some of this and actually make myself a pickaxe head using the kits here. Let's see. I have them lingering around somewhere. There we go. Um, so I'm going to make myself a pickaxe head. And then what I need to do is take this sand, place it in here, and then put the pickaxe cast into the sand. And as you can see, it does cast it out. And so what I can do is I should be able to put two ingots in here. I think two is what this needs, or it's actually one. But I'm going to be making myself a, uh, a head here out of the sand. Now, it will remove this uh, this sand, but this is definitely... Oh, I have that on. <laughs> Never mind. I've got to redo this. Um, I don't have pipes just yet to be doing that. By the way, be careful. If you have a lever, which I have this on. I had this on because I was automating this stuff. Yeah, the only way, other way to get this back is to have some sort of pipe that pipes it back in, in which I don't. But there we go. I should be able to cast this out now. And we should get ourselves some iron. Yeah, and it's two. And that will end up right down here. Um, and then what I got to do is now that I have this, I can combine it. And now I have myself an iron tool and I can go mine my gold. Looky there. <laughs> I'm now at diamond mining level. I can mine things like diamond if I find them, which I'm, I I haven't yet. And just like that, I can go ahead and cast myself out some gold. Let me grab a lava bucket, fill this back up. Uh, we're going to cast some gold and I need myself just a regular ingot to go ahead and make that first cast. But after that, anything we put in here, we can automatically cast out so long as we have ourselves some sort of lever. This right here is ready to go. That's two worth. Just like this. It is going to consume the ingots. But after that, I turn this on. That's going to fill up. And there we go. We've automated the smeltery. It is, of course, a very basic smeltery. But this is great early on. And there we go. We now have gold stored away. And I can, of course, do more and more with this. Um, we're going to be getting into some really interesting stuff with Tinkers here early on. It's definitely a great thing to get into. So remember how I, I actually captured myself or killed myself a bat? Well, that's actually really, really nice, but it doesn't give you the flight you probably think it gives you. So I'm going to go ahead and turn myself into a bat, but you actually have to flap your wings. So I have to hit space bar over and over again. It gives me a flight, but I have to, I have to be able to tap it really fast in order to get any sort of momentum. And uh, you don't fly very fast, per se. Uh, but it does get me access to some really, really cool things, like being able to go up and be able to mine this, which this tree, oh, 
This tree is fantastic. So I'm going to grab all of this mineral from Integrated Dynamics. And uh, this is going to be something definitely, definitely good to hold on to for later. So I think now is a good time. I'm going to go ahead and cast out all the cast. And I want to make myself a 3x3 three three mining hammer. So that way I could definitely mine a lot more efficiently. So I'm using this tool to come up with an idea for what to make. And I think this hammer is going to be really, really nice. It has a pretty decent mining speed um, based uh, because of the fact that it's bronze. It's uh, it's using some of the best stuff for this. So, for example, mining speed, you see right here, the bronze large plates are pretty high up here on the mining speed and also pretty high up here on the durability. So these two are, are pretty nice, plus 25% on maintained mining, and we also have undead damage, so this is a great weapon to use against zombies as well. So I think this is gonna be a pretty good tool. So we have rose gold, which is just copper and gold, and then the bronze, which I believe right here is just simply tin and copper. So mixing these things together in here, I think we're gonna we're gonna be pretty good. So I have all the pieces made up and uh, to use that exact blueprint that I have right here, I should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and apply this just like so. And we have a rose gold bronze sledgehammer with quite a bit of durability and I'm hoping the mining speed is like, mwah. I hope it's good. I hope it's good. And I hope I didn't make something that's like garbage. Oh wow, that's actually, that's quite nice. I would say that is a, a very good mining speed right there. 100%. Uh, so let's just assume there's a block here. So block here. I'm, I'm trying to work my way down to, of course, uh, redstone level. Oh yeah, and this is, this is making things really nice. Of course, I can't mine through this, which is where this comes in handy. But still. Oh, and there's also, by the way, an ore excavation, uh, ore excavation tool. Oh, that is really nice as well that we will eventually get. And I believe it can break through uh, other materials. And just like that, I now have myself some redstone. All right. So we're getting really close to having like most of the base materials that we're going to need like to progress and really start getting into some really fun mods. And of course, it wouldn't be a chosen episode one if I didn't mine some diamond within the first episode. And of course, there we go. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Of course, I do. Before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video. And uh, why not just slap that right here and give a huge thanks to Forced Painter 56. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord Premium member is absolutely being amazing with that diamond membership. I do appreciate that. And of course, guys, if you're interested in becoming a Discord Premium member, all you gotta do is check out the Discord. It's discord.gg forward slash chosen architect, or you can find it linked down in the description below. Also, while you're down there, the mod list is also down there. And be sure to keep on lookout for this mod pack as it will end up on Curse Forge fairly, fairly soon. So guys, of course, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button. And of course, guys, I will see you in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.